by 35, we're still getting these little termites. Some of these mines may require a short hike or even a long hike to get to them. Road's narrowing a little bit. Um, you can see the cliff over there, so I don't want to get too close to the edge. But... All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's all she wrote, unfortunately. All right, I don't think it's a tarantula hawk, but it's some kind of a large flying insect. We're fully prepared for a long hike if necessary. So I want you to see everything that I see. And there's a the shaft. And it goes way down here, but how far down here? It goes way down here. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. Maybe nuggets or something. Shit, shit. Sliding, sliding. Uh, sweat got my eyes a little bit, so I had to take out some napkins and wipe it a little bit. Oh my god, my eyes are burning so bad right now. It's like an antenna or something, aluminum. I found what I'm assuming is the bones of cattle. Something very large. You see they even have a UFO in the tow truck right there. But yeah, this is an alien. All right, so it's like 10 to 7, and we're fueling up right now. I wanted to leave a little bit earlier, but this is just how it happens, kind of. Don't like paying $4.20 for gas, but being this is the last gas station um, on the outskirts of Las Vegas before we head up north to Alamo, don't have much of a choice. I want to top off here. And we'll gas up in Alamo once we get up there. Parking lot's full today. Um, we just gassed up, full tank now. Alamo's about an hour from here, so that'll definitely last us to get there, um, and then we'll top off one more time. But yeah, I've never seen this gas station this full, and here it is, not even 7 a.m. Um, looks like people moving, leaving on their adventures, a couple of people sleeping in their cars, driving all night, um, pulling RVs, off-road vehicles. This gas station here, this Love's truck stop, is one of the last outposts uh, before you leave the Las Vegas area, um, heading up towards Utah or up north toward Area 51, which is where we're going. Um, and that's why a lot of people store their RVs here. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get back on the road, head north, and... Uh, stop in Alamo and top off there and then continue on in the trailhead. Just passing the east entrance to the Desert National Wildlife Refuge, but that's not where we're going today. Uh, stay tuned, we do have more videos planned out there, but we're continuing on towards Area 51 uh, to explore some old mines. Stuck behind a truck, we'll pass them just a little bit. I don't want to get too upset to these guys. Uh, they do a great service for America. Um, all these remote gas stations and whatnot that have all your supplies, gas and whatnot, trucks got them there. So they do a great service. I'm sure Dane Scott in Ohio would agree to that. So uh, let's pass this guy and get on our way. All right, Alamo, Nevada. We're gonna stop here and just top off the tank. Um, it's actually a really big gas station here, probably big as a small supermarket. So like I said, we'll top off the tank and it's about 30 minutes to the trailhead. So this is a gas station. It's about an hour from Rachel, Nevada, and they got everything you need from fresh vegetables, um, aisles just like a regular supermarket. So we're gonna stock up, maybe uh, get some cold drinks and something for lunch, and then uh, we'll head back in the truck and get back on the road. All right, Red Bull and a couple of gas station breakfast tacos, breakfast champions should be enough to keep us going for a little while till lunch. What the heck, I'm not even going that fast. Look at all these bugs. I just came out of nowhere, it's like it's raining bugs. I definitely need to stop and clean this windshield off before we hit the trails. I don't recall the last time I saw that many bugs, but uh, I was able to clean them off. And if you ever work at a gas station, those who uh, have these window cleaners filled with nice blue liquid and plenty of towels, you know what, that's a godsend because these bugs were nasty, straight up minions of hell. But we cleaned off the best we could. We're going off road anyway, so it's gonna get dirty, but uh, let's hit the trail, man, just to get out there. A lot of these gates are meant to keep uh, wildlife out, but uh, you can still get in. You just got to close the gate after yourself. All right, we'll just come in here a little bit, close the gate, and then we'll uh, find a place up there to air down. Something in the road. I don't know what that is. Oh, it looks like a nasty old cowboy boot. Uh, it's seen better days. Uh, Lord only knows how long that thing's been here. Gate's closed. Let's uh, head back to the truck and uh, find a place to air down. I don't want to air down here on the middle of the road in case somebody comes along, so... I'll find a place to pull off and uh, air down up here a little bit more where uh, we can have some room to work. And then we'll get started. So uh, yeah, here's where it starts to get real. Road's still fairly smooth. So um, like I said, I'll find a place to air down. Um, it's not really too critical when you're going slow on a smooth road like this, even if it is dirt. But um, where we're going, I've never been before, so it may get a little bit rough. So like I said, let's, actually that might've been a good place to pull off and air down. So let me back up and do it there. That gives us some room to work. So let's, uh, Pull out the deflators, uh, drop about 10 or 15 pounds, and then we'll jump back on the trail and get to our first destination, which should be about 10 miles out in those hills. 
All right, tire pressure is right where we want it to be. Uh, outside temperature is uh, beautiful, 72 degrees. Beautiful day here up near Area 51 and, nor and uh, just north of Las Vegas, about two hours north of Las Vegas. I've got 919 on the clock, so uh, it is right about where we want to start. I want to hit the trailhead at 9 a.m., and we're pretty much here. So, yeah, air down. Let's do it. we got about 10 miles to go on dirt. And I don't know how rough the road's going to get or how much hiking we're going to have to do, but I can assure you we are fully prepared for everything here. And I've even got one specialized piece of equipment that will blow your mind. Let's do it. Even though I'm doing it by 35, we're still getting these little termites. Uh, I don't know if they're termites or gnats or what they are. They're some sort of small winged insect. And they're very soft, so they're impacting on the windshield. Still getting a few of them here, even though we just cleaned it. So, um, like I said, 35 is still impacting pretty hard. Um, today we're relying on the Onyx Off-Road app, and that should get us where we're going. It looks like it did download the maps. We usually rely on Gaia, and we can rely on Gaia, uh, but we'd have to turn off the uh, internet for that and just go straight to airplane mode because sometimes it tries to download the maps. And uh, we'll just kind of hang there if it doesn't get a connection. So yeah, we're almost to the turn off where we need to be, and then somewhere up in those mountains, I guess, is where we gotta go. Uh, the ride's a lot smoother since we aired down. It feels like we're driving on a carpet as opposed to a hard, uh, a hard packed dirt. So uh, airing down did make a difference. Let's continue on. Uh, the turnoff we're going to is just up here. Um, I've never been down there on Google Earth or in satellite views I've checked. It, uh, it looks like I can drive all the way to the mine, so I'm hoping I can. Um, otherwise, we have to get out and hike a little bit, which I'm sure you guys don't mind. All right, we're getting much higher elevation. So far, the road's in pretty good condition. Um, looks almost pretty much two-wheel drive friendly, but uh, it may not always be like that. We've got still got quite a ways to go, and some of these mines may require a short hike or even a long hike to get to them. Um, but there's a couple of big ones I think you could drive to, so hopefully we'll get to them and they'll be intact. Because um, if you can get to something this easily, chances are people have been there. Like I said, I'm alone, and uh, cell service is available out here, but it's very, very spotty. Um, so. That's why you want to go a little slower and easier just to make sure if something happens you break down um, you may be walking just to pull a signal someplace and uh, that's exactly why I, I ate a little bit extra on the way out here because uh, if I do have to walk any distance you want to make sure you're you don't do it on an empty, empty stomach um, roads getting a little bit rougher and that's fine and prepared for it um, but we've got a little more ways to go so like I said we're just gonna crawl down the road um, so far, no big deal. Um, it, the road is rough, but it's not extreme, which is perfect. So, uh, if it's like this all the way to the mine, it will be great. And uh, it looks like, judging by a lot of this uh, brush and plants that I see in the road, may not have been traveled for a while, which is a big plus, too. Road's narrowing a little bit. Um, you can see the cliff over there, so I don't want to get too close to the edge, but it really is a beautiful view. Uh, we're getting closer. We're getting closer. It's not that far. We're just kind of easing our way down this narrow mountain road. All right, we're approaching the first point, which is a mining complex with several buildings. And this was far too easy to get to, at least for me. Um, Two-wheel drive vehicle, maybe not even high clearance could probably make it. So I'm really, really hoping that this uh, these buildings are going to be intact and not destroyed like we've seen with some of the other mines. Because on Google Earth, they look really cool. So hopefully, right up here at this road a little bit, we'll see this... Uh, this mining complex and it looks like the road is getting rougher like a draw or something which is fine um, like I said so far I'm not even a four-wheel drive uh, but we're making it no problem and it should be just up here a little bit I can see tire tracks but I can't really tell how old they are they may be very old um, could be recent it's really hard to tell I don't think they're too recent uh, but clearly people have been out here um, it's hard to say if it's you know, maybe a, par a ranger, BLM ranger, or if it's uh, just a person like me, or even somebody out here who might want to do damage. But uh, yeah, the road's getting a little rougher here. Like I said, so far, two-wheel drive is fine. Um, probably definitely want a high clearance vehicle, and here's where it's gonna get really rough. So I'm gonna show off the camera, use both hands driving, I and mean, even even to put in four-wheel drive for this. So uh, it's just right up here where we're going. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's all she wrote, unfortunately. Um, the road was, was so easy getting out here, and it looks like the recent rains have washed this out. Uh, I don't think I can make it over this. It's going to be really tough. If I had a guide and got up on the side, maybe, but I'll tell you what, um, 
this rough road, this washed out road, that's that's almost guaranteed we're gonna get stuck. So what I'm gonna do at this time, and we are prepared for it, fully prepared, I'm gonna pack up my gear and we're gonna do some hiking. We're not that far anyway. It should be uh, well, well under a mile. And bugs, man, look at all these dag daggone bugs. This is just absolutely ridiculous. Um, termites, whatever the hell they are, just all over the place. I'm gonna have to really power wash this truck when I get home. All right, I don't think it's a tarantula hawk, but it's some kind of a large flying insect. Um, I don't know if it's a stinging insect or what, but uh, I'm gonna give it some space and get away from it because um, I'm gonna get out of here. It's not, not a tarantula hawk, obviously, but it's some sort of a large flying insect. So you can see the road we just came from and uh, probably we'll move these big boulders out of the way before we carefully back out of here because we are gonna have to back out. Uh, we've gone just about as far as we can go, but uh, yeah, let's, let's load up our gear, put on the backpack, and begin the hike. All right, as always, the backpack is packed to the gills. Uh, just filled up with fresh water. Uh, it's got some food, freeze-dried food, survival gear, uh, binoculars, got the ham radio here, uh, hat, of course, and uh, don't worry about that black bag. You'll see what's in there soon enough. And then, yeah, that's it. Let's put on the backpack and uh, get hiking up this washed-out road. We shouldn't have far to go. And we're out here in the middle of nowhere, but uh, always lock the vehicle. Now I did drop a pin with this road washout is, and uh, guy GPS says it's 6,700 feet. So definitely in the snow range, uh, but as you can see, there's no snow. Not gonna be checking the GPS because according to, uh, according to what I have mapped out, this encampment with buildings should be a pier spell. Not exactly sure how far, but uh, we're fully prepared for a long hike if necessary. I've got all the gear and we're prepared for just about everything. Um, backpacks, survival gear, water, food, sidearm of course, and uh, a few other things here. Not that far from Area 51, like I said, so you never know what you may see. And it would entirely be out of the question to see some sort of, sort of fighter or strange aircraft flying overhead, you just never know. So keep your eyes open and we'll continue on and uh like i said this encampment up here where there's some buildings we should be able to get to that point there's a few of the mines i didn't see them on google earth but i have them mapped out so i'll see if we can hike to those points as well if they're not too far once we get up here but i was planning to drive the whole way not hike but uh it's not a big deal there's a truck back there it's uphill, and clearly the road's washed out, so it's a little rough going, but nothing we haven't been through before. Let's keep going. Looks like the road opened up a little here. You know, I do have a uh, folding shovel in the truck. I wonder if I could have uh, dug that washout just enough to get the truck through. I'll bet you I could have. Supposed to bring a buddy out here with me, but he had plans. And uh, if he was here and we had shovels, I'm fairly certain we could have uh, dug the road out to make it out here. But it's not a big deal, we'll hike it. And it's just as well, because that means probably there hasn't been anybody out here for quite a while, which is a good thing, because you know how destructive people can be. As usual, forgot to start the clock. Um, probably didn't go more than a quarter mile or so, so there we go, we just started the clock and we'll see how far we're hiking today. Now, I'm a little out of breath because this is 7,000 foot level almost. And uh, I did do my exercise all week to stay in shape. But the first part of a hike, especially on a full stomach, it's usually the most challenging. And you can tell the ground a little moist. It rained out here recently. Las Vegas too. Uh, not last night, but night before last. And up here it's about 68 degrees. So uh, water's not gonna evaporate as fast as it does down Las Vegas Valley. But we don't have far to go. It's just up here a little bit and that's fine. I'll check the GPS in just a moment. Beautiful area out here. There should be several mines in this 
in this vicinity where we're going, several. And uh, thing about finding mines on old maps is it can be hit and miss if there's a shaft or even anything there at all. And location might not be correct. But uh, we've got kind of a secret weapon today for finding these mines, which you'll see shortly. There's an old can, there's some sign of civilization. Might mean we're getting close to this first, uh, first point. Now there should be significant buildings, maybe even a shaft to this first point, which should be up here a little bit. And hopefully they're still intact. Can't tell how much farther we have to go. I just checked uh, the GPS, but I would guess I'm at half a mile to a mile, which isn't a big deal. And again, coming back to the truck, it's all gonna be downhill. Now you can check out this cactus. It's got some really beautiful flowers on here, red and yellow. That's what you see in the springtime. When there's moisture out here in the desert, you start seeing the color come out. So it's really beautiful in some areas, but you don't want to touch it because they still are dangerous. And also in the springtime, bugs, insects, snakes, scorpions, you name it. So we've got to keep an eye open for those. A day like this, where it's about 70s, um, it's a great time to see snakes out. So we're just going to have to be extra careful, watch where we're going, and hopefully avoid any of those critters. Just keep on going. All right, this isn't it, but according to GPS, it's just right up there, up the road a little bit. We are almost there. I knew it wouldn't be that long of a hike. All well, the question is, what condition are these buildings going to be when we see them? Is it going to be intact and a real treat? Or are they going to be uh, destroyed like, like the other video? Those uh, abandoned places video of mine. Let's hope they're intact. I see a small clearing ahead. And this is the area where I expect this, uh, these buildings to be, these old, these old buildings. So they should hopefully be right up here somewhere. Getting a little winded, so I'm walking faster. So I'm excited to see what they look like. There's gotta be something up here. I don't see anything yet, do you? Gotta be just up here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, full disclosure, I did peek around the corner. We are here. Check this out. Here's the buildings, and they are intact. Beautifully intact. Oh yeah, let's roll film for this. Let's see. See we have. Wow, there's a mining chute over there. It's Christmas, ladies and gentlemen. I want to open my presents. Oh yeah. Look at this. Oh yeah. Alright, you can see some of the trash appears to wash down a little bit. Man, we could we could have driven to this. But so far I'm not even seeing spray paint. So let's knock on wood. Hopefully everything is intact. Because we are pretty remote out here. There's something over here. Um fire pit maybe probably somebody camped out here yeah it's a campfire somebody camped here this would be an epic place to camp good thing is whoever camped out here doesn't look like they destroyed anything but i've been inside these buildings yet um so there are some good people out here all right i am gonna roll film because i want you to see everything that i see now these are what i've seen here that might be a, uh, a shaft over there. There might be something over up there a little bit more too. So let's carefully walk around, be mindful of snakes, and check these buildings out. Looks like an epic number of rodent droppings. I'm looking up there to make sure there's no bats or animals or anything. We're stepping in here. Oh man, Dinty Moore beef stew. That's an old one. Uh, water bottle, plastic one, so that's somewhat recent. We got an old boot here. That's an old, old uh, rubber boot. Tons of rodent droppings. Look at that. It's just not to stop rat droppings here. It looks like it may have been a bed. All 
right, let's look around some more. All right, just like you're inspecting a crime scene, stop, take your time, watch where you're stepping, take lots of pictures, check every square inch, danger is everywhere. There's no beer bottle, Michelob appears to be. Um, I don't know what to expect in these buildings, so my right hand is free in case I need to grab my sidearm in a hurry. Not that I'm expecting anything. Look at this. That is solid bat guano or something. I don't see any bats up there. All right, there's just animal droppings galore in here. Tons of poop. I wouldn't even sleep in here with so much poop. All right, we got a small room here. Cans, Fresca, Sprite. Uh, circular tops, they're not that old. I'm watching where I'm stepping. This carpet is, look how old this carpet is. It's just rotted away. Some water bottles, windows, um, tons of animal dropping here. If it wasn't for the animal dropping, this would actually be a pretty awesome place to spend the night. Um, I guess you could probably clean them out, get a broom or whatever, a shovel, and just get all that crap out of here. And you've got shelter. Um, is that glass or no? It's still a screen there, but it's not glass. No glass there anymore. I don't know how old this is. Maybe. I'm going to take a while, I guess, say 1950s. What do you think? Comment down below. 1950s? All right, so that's it for this part of the cabin. Let's go outside and check the rest. All right, I'm just going to open this a little bit. It looks like there's tons of crap inside here. May have, an animal may have made a nest in there. I don't know. I can't see anything. Can you? It's like a blue reflection or something. Yeah, I don't see anything in there. Over here. Just because I don't see anything in there. You just never know. People hide stuff out here, so that's so why I don't want to leave any stone unturned. Um, this is very remote, and I just don't see coming back unless there's a compelling reason. We're going to check over there just right now. But I'm watching my step. Is that a bird? It's a big moth. It's a big moth. Or a butterfly. Look at the size of this guy. He's caught inside here. Look at this critter. Well, you're beautiful looking. Sorry, buddy, you got in, you gotta get yourself out. It's not that hard. We'll find his way out eventually. All right. Let's carefully come down here as a roll film. Watch this stuff. I don't wanna step on it, have a snake under there. Coming over here. And let's see what's in here. Okay, floor's rotted away in here. I'm looking up, I'm not seeing anything. Just looking really quick, but carefully. Um, looks like, I don't know, some sort of a tin shack. I don't want to find a body in here. Keystone beer, that's fairly new. Look, you come out here, folks, please sip your damn beer cans. It's just disrespectful. Might have been the stove here. MJB coffee. All right, that might have been a shower or something. I don't know. Sounds creepy, that, uh, that metal just kind of flapping in the wind. Let's come over here. Look out, make sure there's nothing up there. It can attack us. All right, we got wood. Clothes. Uh, the floor is not in too bad a condition. All right, just looking all around. I'm not seeing anything. Just junk, empty cabin. Um, there's a mark. Can't really tell the date on these. Can you? I don't see anything that gives me a date. Um, but I'm guessing these are 1950s. Uh, shotgun blast. Here's the door. Coming out here. I'm trying to avoid stepping on sheet metal in case there's something under an animal or something. Just carefully look all around. Oh, that's kind of gave me the creeps actually. I don't know why. Kind of cool looking. Now I do see like a tailings pile, another shack up there, and uh, an ore shoot. So I'm guessing there's a mine shaft up there. We are fully prepared with the night sun, but I'm not going to go in anything dangerous, not alone. 
Uh, to my buddy who I asked if you want to come out here, man, you're missing out. But there'll be other times. So I'm gonna take a couple pictures and we're gonna walk up on the hill over there and see what they got. All right, let's roll film. This uh, this may be a long day. There, there's so much to see out here. Um, aside from this site, there's one other site where I know there's some sort of, a, at least a small structure, which we're going to check out on the way home. That one may also require some hiking. And uh, I remembered everything out here at this time, except for one thing that I don't need to bring that I should have brought, and that's my dirt bike. If I found the dirt bike, we could uh, get a place like this easily. And it's legal. Unlike Desert National Wildlife Reserve, this is all BLM land, so dirt bike's legal. So, let's go through here. See, I'm guessing there's a mine shaft up there, because where there's dirt piles, there's a mine shaft. We come through this brush, and unfortunately, I did not put on bug spray, so I'm praying that I do not get ticks. That would suck. We'll just have to check ourselves really good and maybe find an alternate path. It doesn't require brushing up against this uh, plant line because that's how you get ticks and stuff. Looks like maybe old road out here, which is fine. And all the better. Here's another nice cactus. It's in full bloom for the spring. As you can see, really beautiful flowers. Really nice. All right, let's continue up here. I just checked, I didn't see any ticks. The good thing about these uh, these cakey pants, these 511 cakey pants is, if there are any ticks, uh, they should be fairly easy to spot. They're small, but they're not that small. All right, so here we are at this uh, tailings pile. Looks like a metal pipe or something on top of it. More metal pipe sticking out of the ground. There's gotta be a shaft around here somewhere. And I think I found it right over here some sort of a building. Yeah, there's a mine, I see it right there. We're gonna check that out in just a second. Okay, we got a gas can. Looks like this was a uh, lubricant storage area, judging by the way the ground is dark. Union 76 red line lube. Um, other interesting stuff out here. Get a quick picture. All right. More lubricants. It's not a very big mine, but it looks like there may be a couple of shafts here. Maybe. We'll check those out in a minute. Um, over here, it's an ore shaft. Looks like. And this would have been where they had mining carts. Um, coming out here to dump the ore down this ore chute into trucks, which are no longer here anymore. But that's it, that's an old ore chute. And there's the, uh, there's a cabin and we'll see what else is around here. Kind of cool looking, huh? You gotta be careful you step because these nails, it's easy to step on something like that. And a lot of these can easily collapse. All right, let's go back and check out that mine. You won't find things like this close to Las Vegas. People will set it on fire, they'll burn it, they'll destroy it, and it's really terrible. So um, let's go check out these shafts. I will shine the light in. I may go in a little ways, but if it's uh, too narrow or appears too dangerous, I'm not going to risk it. I'm alone. There's no cell signal here, and uh, if there's a cave in, I will die in there. So that's, that's, that's a fact. So if I could get in there carefully to film a little bit, I will. That's... Uh, Let's move on. I don't know what kind of a mine this is. Gold or something? Or who knows? If it is, that'd be kind of cool to find a big old nugget down here. Um, but it could be lead or something. It's really hard to say. The kind of mineral. I didn't check it too much before I came out here. There is, there's a lot of mines out here in this area. A lot of them. So uh, I didn't check the history on each and every one. I just mapped them out. So let's... Just looking out there to see if I can see anything else. Alright, so far nothing. Let's walk up a little bit and check out this, at least one shaft. And I don't know if there's what looks like there might be something up there. A couple up there, maybe some prospect pits. All right. Look in here. This one, oh geez, this does go in. Yeah, I'm gonna need the night sun for this. We'll come back, because I'm gonna need the night sun for that. That one does go in. I couldn't even see very far. These might be prospect pits, but we're gonna come over here and check them out anyway. Oh wow, there's another shaft over here. Yeah, look at that. 
Let me peek in these real quick. We'll come back down, break out the night sun, and uh, see how far those go. Some piece of metal here. I don't know what this is. It's considerable ore all over the place. Another shaft over there. Man, there's a lot of shafts over here. This is interesting. All right. That is a small hole. And I'm alone, so I'm gonna go to the big one. I'm not crawling in anything tiny today, that's for darn sure. Probably a prospect pit, but judging by all this material, I'd say it might be a shaft. So let's do our best to climb up here and see what's in there. This might go in. Just want to be careful where I put my foot. Okay. I'm gonna have to use more than just my two feet to climb up this prospect pit. It doesn't even look like it goes in, which is surprising. I don't see it goes in at all, do you? I'm not gonna waste my time. Let's uh, head back down carefully. I'm gonna fall. Think about these mines. People, they follow what appears to be a vein, and it turns out to kind of be nothing. So they stop digging. There, then I started digging too. We'll check over here, watching where we step. Uh, there's a small hole up there, but I can't tell if that goes in. I'm not going to worry about it. Promising ones are right down here anyway. Keep in mind, we've got a lot to explore today. All right. Let's peek over here really quick and see if this goes in or if it's just a prospect pit. It may go in a little bit, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna worry about it too much because this other one over here clearly goes in. How far we're gonna be able to go, I don't know. But I will tell you this, I am, I'm not gonna take a chance to do something unsafe. So if I can get in and it looks like it's not gonna cave in, I'll try. But uh, otherwise I'm not gonna, my life at risk no matter how cool it seems all right that's it let me come over here take off my pack at the night sun and we'll see how far in we can go with that one all right out here in the middle of nowhere just north of area 51 just like any of you said it's deep it's dark and it's scary but uh we have got the fenix lr 35r at night sun it's a 10,000 lumen flashlight and uh, i am wearing my pack in here some of you might say i just leave your pack there Reason is, if something happens, a cave in or something, um, I've got a Leatherman, I've got food, I've got water, and I've got a better chance of digging myself out than with nothing. So just looking around before I actually get fully inside. It doesn't look like it would cave in, um, so I'm gonna crawl in a little bit, but I do see it looks a little wet, and uh, it's just hard to say with this dirt. So let's turn on the night sun. I'm trying to get a brighter setting, and I think that's it. All right, let's check it out. Wow, this thing goes way in here. Maybe an ore chute, air vent. Well, clearly there's that other hole we looked at. It goes up there, and it goes way down here, but how far down, man, it goes way down there. Look at that. It goes way down there. There's some barrels, maybe some artifacts. It's noticeably cooler in here than it is out there. And looking at these uh, pieces of wood, they were bringing mining carts up here. And uh, I could go down there, but I am alone, and I'm not going to risk it. But you could see all the way down there. It goes way down there. And it's a pretty good cavity in here. That I like to say a dynamite hole, but I think you know that's a core sample hole. As I've been corrected by folks who know mining better than I do. There's the, uh, there's the exit. And uh, if one caves in, there's another one, thank goodness. So I'm going to go in a little bit more. Hopefully there won't be a cave in. 
and it looks like it goes in even more. So watching when I step, watching for snakes or the critters, Bud Light can. Let's go in just a little more. I'm gonna go in just a little bit, but not too much. It's a piece of wood. I see more wooden structures up there. All right. I really don't like going through these mines all by myself. So far, there's a third tunnel over there, as you can see, um, a third potential exit, because I'm worried about cave-ins, but I don't see braces, so clearly they're working here back in the day without them. Let's keep going and see what else we find. Wow, there's a barrel, some wooden supports. Um, I am actually afraid. I don't know where this goes, and we're a long way from home. Background, okay. GoPro in one hand, camera at the other, taking pictures. Something shiny, lubricant. There's some uh, wood braces holding this mine up. This thing goes way in here and uh, goes down even further down there. There's a ladder going all the way down, my God. And you can go down there, but there's no guarantee that uh, there's anything worth seeing down there at all. So you're putting yourself at risk going down this ladder if there's nothing down there. So that's, this one's kind of hit and miss. Um, can lower the GoPro down there, maybe. Again, these holes are probably core sample holes. Goes in over there. Looking over here. This thing goes way in here. Yeah. All right. We're pretty deep in there. I'm not going to shut this light off because this is just kind of creepy. This is not Desert National Wildlife Refuge. This is about three hours north of Las Vegas and about as remote as you can get. Well, not as remote as you can get, but it's remote. All right. Night sun is very bright, but it's getting hot. So, just looking to find our way out of here. Now, these mines can be unsafe and sometimes have bad air, so I shouldn't even be in here at all. All right. Here's the uh, exit. That sun's getting really hot, so I'm gonna take a picture or two and then shut it off and get out of here. All right, let's uh. I think I've got enough pictures of video. I may come back sometime, but I'm not coming back alone. I'm not gonna explore any deeper than this unless I'm with somebody else. That's it. A piece of metal, I guess. I've been here a long time. And uh, that's about it. Air vent. All right, show up the night sun. Ow, night sun's actually starting to burn my hand. Let's get out of here. Back to the light of day. All right, <gasps> oh, we're out, thank goodness. Wow, that thing goes way in there, way in there. Much further than, uh, wow, that's just multi-levels. That's nuts, that is just nuts. Wow, okay. I don't know what else is out here, but I'm gonna check the GPS and I'm probably going to continue up forward into this valley a little bit because I know there's some of the mines up there. So let me put away the night sun. And I think this is a great time to get our specialized piece of equipment and do another, another recon. So if you give me just a minute for that. I'll be honest, this building here, the or these buildings, this mine, and uh, the other port we're going to check on the way home are the, are the two main ones I wanted to see out here. Anything else is gravy. So uh, like I said, let me get out my 
a uh, brand new specialized piece of equipment and uh, we're gonna do a very different recon that, we're, that you're gonna used to. So I think you're gonna, think you're gonna like this. Winds are calm, weather is perfect. Uh, if you're ready, ladies and gentlemen, let's do some flying. Right, ladies and gentlemen how was that finally huh finally you guys have been after me for ages to get a drone and finally we have access to a drone there's a landing zone right there we've packed up the drone packed up all our gear uh, we're done at this location we're gonna move on down there's several more mines that I have marked um, they're marked on one app and not the other so I'm not sure if they're gonna be there or not um, we get close, I see something, I'll pull out the drone. I may see a tailings pile up there, so I may pull the drone for that. Um, but yeah, this is exactly what we got it for. Um, something like this. Now, before you get all excited about the drone, uh, be advised, it's not the end all be all. Um, it's got some limitations. So this is uh, one of the smaller models. Um, I wanted to start small. If anything happens, it gets crashes, I can't find it. I don't want to be out several thousand dollars. So it's a smaller model, but it does work beautifully, as you can see. Um, battery limitations about 30 minutes so it'll supposedly will go about 10 miles but uh, the battery will last for what I've seen um, other youtubers the battery will last a mile or two so it's not gonna really go that far um, it'll get close to some locations for scouting but not that close and the biggest limitation of all of course is government regulations I know I know the government always kind of reigns in our parade um, there are significant no-fly zones for drones in the Las Vegas area, obviously, um, and especially up near Area 51. Now, I did check the airspace out here. This is BLM land. It is well north of Area 51. Um, there are no airspace restrictions out here that I saw, and there are no uh, rules saying drones can't be out here. Desert National Wildlife Refuge, there is a rule saying no drones. Um, basically drones are mecha mechanized vehicles off designated roads. It's it's a refuge for animals where they can get away from things like that. So um, that and there is geofencing in place at the Desert National Wildlife Reserve, which uh, will, I believe, prevent drone flights. I'm not sure if it will, but it'll certainly give you a warning and uh, 
tell you you're not supposed to be out here. And those of you said, hey, who would know? Well, look, the, the drone, unfortunately, you don't have to register a small one like this with the FAA, but the drone does broadcast its serial number. So anybody who was in the area that had a, a way to read it, the authorities or something. That being said, as long as we stay legal, use it sparingly where we can, I think it'll be a good tool. And uh, it is not gonna take the place of hikes but it will hopefully augment our hikes and uh, allow us to check out some places without having to kill ourselves only to hike up a hill seeing that it's nothing. If it's something promising, then yeah, we'll, we'll risk it. Well, that's about it. Let's continue on a little bit and see if we can get to some of these other points. Uh, but if I don't see anything promising in a little bit, I'm gonna turn back to the truck. Figure there's one more mine that I wanna get to um, that we passed on the way out here. That one may also require a hike because it looked like the road to it was really narrow. And uh, right now I've got 11.30 a.m. We did eat those two big uh, breakfast gas station breakfast tacos which filled me up pretty well. So I'm not in a hurry to have lunch. I do have freeze dried food, but once we get back to the highway from that point, the trailhead, it's about 30 minutes of a little alien and Rachel. And I've heard they've got pretty awesome burgers. And I know some folks have asked to go check it out. So we'll try to head up to Little Alien for a late lunch and see if we could do that. But now let's continue on. See if we can find out here any caves or anything up on the hills. We'll see if we can use the drone to, uh, to check it out. So I've got about a battery and a half left. Got more batteries on order. But uh, for right now, a battery and a half left. So our flight time is somewhat limited. But... Uh, like I said, if I see something, I'll use it. If I don't, we'll just uh, continue back. Let's so keep on going. Some more material, just some screening material probably used around some of these mines. And like I said, there are uh, supposed some several other mines up here. We're gonna hike up a little bit, see if we can get to them. But on Google Earth, I didn't see anything promising. And they're not as prominently marked as that last one we were at was. That one we're at was a big one. But believe it or not, there are actually bigger mines than that out here. To really fully explore that, you've got to have a bunch of people, including, excuse me, including somebody waiting outside the mine. Looks like another road here, and I believe this one is, I'm guessing, leading to the mine down there. Uh, if not, it may, well, I don't know. There's roads all over here. You just never know. So this one here, I'm gonna walk over here so there's an easier way to get to it. Oh, I'm just gonna climb straight up the hill. But clearly there's something up there. So yeah, something like this, I should, I should have just climbed instead of using the drone and burning up battery. But you know, this is our shakedown hike. I'm gonna see what that baby can do. And so far it's been good. Now this little tiny phone screen that I have really kind of sucks as far as uh, seeing the flight. I love some VR goggles, but this one here that I drone I have isn't compatible with them. I do have a tablet holder on order to use a tablet, but I don't want to carry a whole lot of gear with me when I'm in the field. So the uh, camera screen works and I can assure you what you see in the video is significantly better than what I see on the screen. The screen just kind of gives you an idea. Just barely enough to fly the thing. All right. We're climbing, we're climbing, because that's what we do. Like I said, anything more than just something quick and easy, I'm not gonna launch the drone. Because that eight minutes of flying time, realistically could be three. And if it crashes, I could probably recover it, but I don't wanna damage it. And if it falls in a tree, it's even tougher to recover. So now you see, drones have the limitation. Sometimes it's best just to bite the bullet and use your own two feet to hike someplace, even though it's a challenge to get there. Like this is. Oh man. Okay, right up here somewhere. And there's the shaft. Yeah. 
it goes down there. I'm gonna have to break out the night set and see how far down. Ooh, beautiful view though, huh? Look at that. This would be a great place to launch the drone. I know I'm not gonna launch the drone down there. I technically could, but there's not enough space to fly and it's got no lights on it. But I can shine the flashlight down there. All right, let's see how far down it goes. Now, there's a night sun shining down there. Um, I would say it goes down 15 to 20 feet maybe, and then it goes in. There may not be anything in there. There's a good chance there's nothing in there. There's a possible something that is in there. Can I get down there? Yes. However, there is a very real possibility that I would not be able to get out. Even though it looks like I could probably climb up here, brace myself with this wood, there is a real possibility I cannot get out. And we are a long way from home for me to get stuck in a hole like this. If I had rope with me, I'd try it, but I do not have rope with me. It's just extra stuff to carry. If I had a buddy with me, I would try it, but I do not, I'm alone. So as much as I would like to check that out, it's a risk I'm not gonna take. But you can at least see what's in there. And if we come back out to this complex, we'll come back out here and we'll go in there and check it. Because if I come out here, I'm coming with a buddy. So that's it. More than just a prospect pit. And uh, let's put on our gear and uh, keep on walking. This shaft right here is not on the map. Uh, might see something over there. I think I might walk over there and check. I don't know. It looks like a log. This is not on the map. Uh, this is not mapped out as a mine. So I'm going to mark it and uh, we'll come back to another time as a confirmed shaft. And we're going to continue up the valley a little bit and see if there's anything else obvious up there. Because um, you just never know. It's hard to tell. There may be some other paths around here. Uh, looks like there may be one down this way. Um, there, There's thousands of mine shafts in Nevada and many of them are not even marked on any map. So this is clearly one that's not been marked. There may be other ones down there. It's hard to say. I want to check out down there. But in the interest of time, I got 12 noon already, so um, I'm going to begin the trek down this hill and then go up the, the canyon a little bit more, see if there's anything up there. And then we're going to trek back to the truck because there's one more spot I want to check where I did see structures on Google Earth. And that may require a small hike or maybe even a little big hike, I don't know. And then I'm going to try, if we have time, to get to Little Alien to get a burger or some lunch out there. And then it's about two hours to get home, so it's going to be a long day. So I don't want to dilly-dally out here any longer than I have to. Well, uh... We're going to keep on going. Hiking is what we do. You love it. I love it. It gets us out here in the wilderness, and we are we are deep today. This is very remote. Um, like I said, not to repeat myself, but this is about trailheads about two to two and a half hours from Las Vegas, another 30 minutes on dirt. So we're maybe a good three hours from Las Vegas. Maybe a little more or less. So it's pretty remote. And uh, there really isn't any town or anything close by here. Alamo, Nevada, I think, is the closest. All right. Now we'll go this way. Cut corners a little bit. Yeah, I'm watching for snakes. I don't want to run into anything like that out here. Knock on wood. Nothing really too extreme, and the ground's a little moist, so our feet are sinking in a little bit, which helps gives us traction. And it's not that humid out here, which is good. All right, there's a semblance of a road down there we're gonna get on and follow this canyon up a little bit. Let's see if there's anything else interesting. Mine like that up there, the mine shaft, like I said, there may be nothing in there, but it may open up. There might be some really cool stuff in there. I mean, people leave uh, gear, artifacts from 150 years ago. You just never know what you're gonna find in an old mine. I'd love to follow this road up. Um, if we had the dirt bike, maybe we could have, but we don't, so we're on foot. Let's keep going. Come across an old tire, clear part of a tractor, some old sort of old mining vehicle. Um, Firestone looks like. See the size. 
Uh, rayon, something dipped. Any date on here? Is that a date code? The internet sluice, if that's a date code, look it up and mention in the comments. That's about all I could see. Let's keep going. Just check GPS and uh, about halfway from, the, from that mine to the next point, which is another mine. Um, so I'm gonna go, keep going, try to get to it. And that might be all the ones we're gonna do. Because that one, I did not see anything on Google Earth, but you never know until you get there. And uh, not that bad of a hike, it's, it's like a wash. It looks like a trailer road on Google Earth, it really is just a wash. Might have been a road at one time. But clearly this is a car by water during rainstorms. Which is amazing because it rarely rains out here. But I'm doing alright, starting to get warm. Um, as far as hiking goes, probably going just barely over a mile. It's not really a big deal. Now we are the 7200 foot level though, so it's higher elevation. Not that big of a deal, but this is gonna yeah, have a nice trip. This is extremely remote. So I'm um, taking it easy as we usually do. Let's keep going. A lot more greenery out here. And uh, not really a path anymore. We're kind of going cross country almost. But the point we're going is just right up here, really not much further. Otherwise I'd have turned back towards the truck and continue on to our next point where I know there is structures. So far I'm really not seeing evidence of other hikers out here. No rock cairns, no trash. There was some of the mining complex back there, but uh, nothing here. And we're going, should be just right around this bend. Let's go a little further and see if we can get to that point point. see if there actually is a mine there. Kind of some creek beds here, not really a road or anything. Where we gotta go, I think it's behind this, uh, this rock hill. Let's head up there see if there's anything up there. Looks like some climbing. I'm still gonna go further. I keep checking the GPS and if there's anything really too significant. Um, well, I might launch a drone over here. Just to kind of peek up over this so we don't gotta climb over it. It does take time to unpack it, set it up. Just a few minutes, but still. Something inaccessible like this. I can launch a drone to see if there's anything worth seeing over there. You know, normally I can climb it, it's no big deal. And I don't want to get lazy now that we have a drone to use because it burns through batteries fast. All right, let me check the GPS, see how close we are. All right, we're close. I'm not that close. I think uh, we've got to go up over a little bit and that's going to take too much effort. Um, I'm gonna launch the drone just to get an aerial picture of the area. Of the area Should just take a, a minute just to get it at altitude up there, a couple hundred feet. Take a few pictures and uh, pack it up again. That should be about the last of the battery. But I'll just, uh, like I said, launch it just enough to get some pictures and see if this is a mine over there.
All right, I just want to show you real quick. Um, once I got the drone to altitude, a um, few hundred feet up in the air, you could see right here um, what I actually missed. I wasn't following the GPS, I was following what I thought was the road, but I was wrong. I was actually going off a little bit too far to the right. So right here in the center of the screen, you could see this is the route I should have been following. And I had it marked on GPS. Had it been following the GPS, I would have known that that's the way I needed to go. Now the thing about the drone is, you can't really see very well in that small phone screen. So I didn't see this until I actually analyzed the video later. Thing is, had I stayed on this uh, road, I probably would have found some additional mines. And you can see the hills really don't look too bad here. Um, so yeah, that's the route I wanted to go. But these are roads that haven't been traveled in 50 years or so. So it's really easy to start following a wash and uh, forget which, which is the actual road because it becomes so overgrown. Back to the video. There's the drone up there. I saw something else hovering behind the drone. I don't know what it was. It wasn't a bug. It's something hovering behind the drone at a long distance, but uh, battery's low. Let's go ahead and get this bad boy back home. It's a very tight landing spot here. So let's get him down here safely. I am just learning how to pilot the drone and we're trying to land right here. I'm gonna to try to land it right there. It's gonna to be tough. Low battery, we got about two minutes, 47 seconds. So ignore the low battery warning, we're fine. We're just gonna ease it down here. There we go. Chopped the propeller a little bit, but that's fine. I got spare propellers. I think we're fine. I don't see any damage to it. Um, we're good to go. And uh, we got some good aerial shots out there. So I didn't see anything on the camera. Uh, I'm, I'm going to put that away carefully here in just a minute. I didn't see anything on the camera, but um, maybe. Low battery. Yes, I know it's low. We'll switch batteries. Um, in fact, what we'll do is we'll try to charge the battery on the way to the next point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut the drone off. Okay, yeah, the drone shut off. And we're gonna shut the controller off. Controller's off. Now, like I said, I didn't see anything in the camera, but uh, you saw it just in the screen how, how it looks. Uh, maybe you saw something that I didn't. I'm gonna analyze the video when I get home, obviously. I didn't see anything obvious look like a mine over there. If it is, it wouldn't be more than something like this, a little dug out part of the, the hill, which we'll walk up there and check. I'm sure it's nothing, but I didn't see anything, but hopefully we got some good aerial pictures of the area. Um, one thing I, I noticed in the drone is from this camera, you are not, a, I, I can't see 
I can't, this, the camera really, um, the, the phone itself, the phone screen isn't uh, detailed enough so I can see uh, details um, of the terrain. Now the maximum altitude, we were about 400 feet. So I got the drone up to about 400 feet out there and um, I did a quick 360 to see if there's anything out there. I didn't see anything on the phone screen, but maybe you did. So at any rate, that's it. This is as far as we're gonna go. I'm gonna pack it up and we're gonna start the uh, trek back to the truck and we'll continue on to the next point. All right, drone and gear are packed up. I don't know if there really is a mine over there. Like I said, I couldn't see anything on Google Earth and I looked carefully, um, but I did mark out here. There are maybe 10 or more mines out here that I have marked on Google Earth uh, that I got info on two of which had confirmed structures. We already been to the first one, we're going to the second one. So the drone's packed up. We did launch the drone here, got to about 400 feet. Uh, you may have seen something in the video. I have not reviewed it yet. Um, just look and make sure those don't go in and they don't. Um, like I said, you may have seen something in the video. I didn't. Um, all I had to look at was a small cell phone screen in uh, daylight, so it was really tough to see. So what we're gonna do now is carefully make our way back to the truck. Um, I got 111 miles on the clock, so I'm guessing somewhere around a mile back to the truck, and it's all downhill, and once we get past this rough stuff, it should be just uh, like walking down a road, not a big deal. We'll, of course, pass that mining complex on the way back, um, but that's about it. Uh, so far, it's been a very fruitful expedition. Um, but yeah, let's get back to the truck, go to the next point, which is on our way out of here, and then, time permitting, we'll take the 30 minute trek. It is out of our way a little bit, but since we're here, about a 30 minute trek to Rachel, and hopefully we can uh, have a meal at Little Alien. So I see another tailings pile up there, and uh, that is not the same tailings pile that we saw. There's the mine, there's that shack. So behind there is a, is a hole. Up here, whew, 12.30, we're here, let's try it. Let's, let's go check it out, dog on it. I saw the tailings pile and uh, launching the drone we could, but uh, it's almost as much, it's almost just as easy just to hike up to it, which I think we're gonna do. Yeah, it's just a hill climb. Just want to see if there's another mine up here. If there is, I'll mark it and maybe come back another day. I know you guys like these crazy hill climbs. You got to be careful. It's on the edge there and almost slip. Okay. How much for snakes? I am getting a little hungry. And I've got freeze-dried food if necessary, but uh, try to wait till a little alien. Okay, be careful. I'm gonna shut the GoPro off because I need both my hands for this. I'm winded. We did it, and we got out of the shaft. All right, this one I can't tell if it goes in. Oh, I'm winded. Okay, instead of taking my backpack for the night sun, I'm gonna do, I think it's a prospect pit. I'm gonna pull out a trusty stream light and use this. This goes into solid rock. So not too worried about cave-ins. All right, it's a prospect pit. Well, Prospect hole doesn't go in very far, but you can see how far it goes in. All right, that's it. Not very far. Almost not even worth checking. All right, that's it. Whew. Oh, what are you gonna do? There's a mining camp down there. Uh, hard to say, it could be a prospect. Um, tailings pile up on the hill, hard to say. So much to see in these hills, and so little battery in the drone. 
Okay, I'm gonna roll film for this just because there's a high likelihood that I'll fall or slide or trip or something, and that's gonna suck. But I know you guys sitting on the edge of your seat like this suspenseful kind of stuff here. Imagine if this was a gold mine and this is all ore. And it could be, it could very well be. Could be nuggets or something. Shit, shit, I'm sliding, I'm sliding. Okay. Okay. Carefully. I should have dropped a pin there, but uh, not a huge deal. I think I could find this on Google Earth. I mean, it's just a prospect, a prospect hole that doesn't go in very far. All right. It's, uh, uh, it's the best way to get out of here. I guess it doesn't really matter. Let's see if we can get this way, diagonally, maybe. Without falling. There. It's a little bit firmer ground, but just trying to watch for snakes and uneven terrain, rocks, things like that. All right. All right, be careful. I wanna fall. Come on, almost there. We're down. <sighs> Onward. All right, so clearly this uh, bang drink here is not from the olden days. This is something modern. So somebody came out here drinking this stuff and just littered. Litter bugs, or like LEB in Australia calls them tossers. Litter bugs in America, doesn't matter what country you're in, they're terrible. People, they just leave their litter. No respect for the environment. So that's why the vast majority of people out there I just simply don't trust. I really don't. So I don't give away these locations, people tear it up. This one here is sufficiently remote, people can't get to it very easily, so they're not going to. People who do harm to these places generally don't put forth a lot of effort into getting to them. Looks like there might be something up there. I can't tell, but it's nothing. Just walk up here and peek. I see a rock pile. Anything up here? Well, there's some sort of a pit or a dig. Yeah, might have been a prospect pit at one time. What's over here? Anything? Prospect pit? Could be. This whole area is peppered with mines. Mine shafts, prospect pits, and a lot of them aren't on any maps. All right, that's enough. The day's, the day's drowning on. We gotta get back to the truck, check that other point, then get uh, a little alien to eat. Then we got a healthy two and a half, three hours drive home. All right. All righty. Let's do it. I got worse shaft. All right, there's the truck where we left it. On the clock, 2.53 miles hour 47 minutes Now we did pause this a little bit briefly been going in the mine so probably 2.47 50 uh, closer to three miles closer to three mile hike but uh yeah two hours three mile hike not really that far i wasn't planning on even hiking that much today I was hoping to drive the whole dog on way to the mine if it wasn't for a washed out road we could have but it is what it is so it's uh Get our gear off, get back in the truck, carefully back out of here, and uh, use the GPS to get back to the next point. And uh, when I get in the truck, I'm gonna plug the drone in and uh, charge it. I do have a spare battery that's fully charged, but if I could charge this existing battery, that's all the better. So that's what we'll try to do. All right, now comes the fun part, backing up carefully down this road, checking the mirrors too. I'm really nervous backing up. It is, uh, I'm already having to reverse and go forward, avoid some boulders, some avoiding bushes, but there's berms on each side of the road, so um, I can't really turn around yet until I find an open place. And you can see where it just came from. Oh, we gotta go. It's gonna be tough, but I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to turn around here, just simply because 
I don't know how far we have to go backing up. It could be miles, um, but I'm going to try to turn around right here. It's going to be it's going to be a challenge. But I'm not going to film it. It's too dangerous. I can't do it. It's just not enough space to turn around. And judging by these busted branches, I think other people may have had the same idea. But we're going to have to keep backing up even more. Still backing up. No place to turn around yet. Probably gone about a quarter mile so far in reverse. Looking for a place to turn around. Let me check over here and see if that, I don't think that's a place. Probably just. Yeah, I think I just not see any place to turn around yet. I wonder if we could I think we could do up there. What do you think? Give it a shot. We couldn't do it. The truck's just too long. Gotta keep backing up. So I did get turned around. Uh, it was tough. I had to go over some bushes, but uh, barely, barely made it. And uh, we're on our way to the next point. All right, I'm not going to get in that backwards fiasco again. This is as far as we go. So I've stashed the truck off the road here. And uh, more than likely, I think I can execute a turnaround here and get out of here safely. Um, but the road narrows, and at the very least, I'd probably get some uh, scratches inside of the truck. You see these bushes, they'll. These are pretty good scratches, which I do have. They're probably, well, a lot of them can buff out, but the more scratches you put in the truck, the worse it gets beat up, and uh, I like to keep it preserved as much as possible. So uh, I guesstimated about maybe a mile to the mine, I think. I just drank a bunch of Gatorade, so I feel good. Um, haven't eaten yet. It's, um, what time is it? It's, it's almost two, it's quarter, it's quarter two. And uh, we did have that second breakfast, so I'm not too hungry. But if we get to the mine and get back, uh, it's just a matter of getting to the trailhead and uh, it's all pavement to the little alien where we can hopefully get a burger or something to eat before we begin the trek back home. So let's go. All right, so our first piece of trash, and that's a good sign. Uh, those are pull tab, so old tin cans, nothing recent. Um, I can't tell if people have been down this road before. It looks like maybe some tire tracks. You see how much these trees are overgrown. Um, you're going to really scratch up your vehicle driving down this, so it's not recommended. But uh, it looks like the, the truck wouldn't have made it. But it's fine. We'll hike it. We'll go a little ways and check the GPS, see how far we have to go. If it was more than a mile, I'd probably say, eh. If it's a mile, that's fine. We'll do it. Hike, hiking isn't the big a deal. But uh, driving it, I could tell you can scratch the heck out of your truck. And uh, people have been driving this, you can see kind of tire tracks here, but uh, maybe not for a while since the, the brush is overgrown. So it's really hard to say. But that's a good sign that once we get here, things will be intact. Now you see this ridiculousness? The truck went a hell of a time making up this, if it even did at all. So it just goes to show you, scratches or not, we wouldn't have made it. Even the dirt bike, my CRF 450, we had a hard time coming up. Maybe a small two-stroke or something, a small lightweight two-stroke could do this. But sometimes just as easy to get out and hump it and walk it yourself. I don't know how rough it's gonna get or how much farther. It's definitely warming up out here. But uh, just check GPS, we're making progress, but not that much. So we're just gonna take our time. I didn't realize it'd be an uphill incline the whole doggone way. That's fine, we'll keep going a little more. Here's some more trash. Some kind of a can, maybe a paint or something, I don't know. I expect to see bits and pieces of trash here and there on the way to this mine. It's a ways. I kind of don't want to go all the way there, but that's just being lazy. It's warming up a little today. And I realized this was uphill and rough terrain. But no matter how warm it gets here, it's not the 100 degrees that it is in the Las Vegas Valley right now. 
or will be later rather. And I always try to see rock face like this because sometimes that's where you see the caves. Thing is, there could be a cave right up there somewhere you wouldn't even see it. But a lot of times, usually the base of these rocks, you find big caves and uh, it's usually a big find because the entrance might be small, but the cave itself could be huge. Well, have an old car, you think? Things like that is encouraging. And like I said, you could spend all day combing these rocks for caves and stuff and never find one. Or you could walk right up there and find one, you never know. But we're not here to find caves. We're here to keep going towards this mine that is mapped out I have up here that is pretty much guaranteed to have a structure. Which means there'll probably be a shaft. So, I'm guessing this is the path. We're just kind of slowly taking our time, coming up. Now this is a significant hike, and you really do have to be in shape. Um, like I've said in my other videos, I do have a, a strict workout regimen that I stick to every day. And don't skimp or miss, I just feel terrible if I do, so I don't. And because of it, it keeps me in decent condition, which is necessary for hikes like this, uphill, in rough terrain, in the hot sun. All right, let's top in the shade and check GPS. Bought my estimate, we're almost halfway there. I feel a cool breeze, which on my sweaty face feels really good. Um, as long as we stop in the shade every now and then, I think we're fine. And going back, it's gonna be all downhill. So I'm gonna continue on. And I don't wanna come all the way out here, get halfway there and say, ah, screw it and turn back. That's, uh, that's just not how I roll, you know that. I don't have to be back at any particular time today. Um, so I'm just kinda of taking my time um, and getting where we're going and that's it. Sweat got in my eyes a little bit, so I had to take out some napkins and wipe it a little bit. Oh my God, my eyes are burning so bad right now. Must have been some of the sunscreen. I'll put all this away and we'll continue on. Wow, that's a little bit better. Man, my eyes were seriously burning back there. Um, like I said, the sweat I think may have somehow washed some lotion or something in my face. In my eyes rather. And I just had to wipe it away. Just took out a napkin and I do have a wet wipe in there, but I'm gonna save that for later. Here's a, a tin, pieces of metal. Another piece of metal over here, an old bottle cap. Ugh, rusty old bottle cap, can't even see what's printed on there. <sighs> Scrap metal. It's a can that uh, doesn't look like a pull tab can. There's maybe a prospect pit over there, it looks like. You never know what you find out here. Prospect pit, trash pit. I'm seeing a lot of trash. Some more metal pieces over there. Let me check the GPS. I don't think we're around anything. We're definitely not close to the mine yet. Let me see what we are close to. No, we're about halfway there, or not even quite halfway there. I'm just seeing a lot of trash around here, which leads me to believe there may be a mine or a settlement around here somewhere. So, if you spot something I don't, let me know. And no, I'm not gonna launch the drone because um, you may not be able to see anything under these trees, kind of like I see an old mattress over here. Here's some metal pipe and some of the stuff you wouldn't even see because uh, the drone won't see through trees. Yeah, here's an old mattress. Something blue over there. It's over there, some wood. Oh, almost tripped. Might have been a structure over there. Let's get a closer look. Yeah, it was a structure. Look at this. Oh, something dug out there. Sleeping bag, maybe? Yeah, something burrowed there. All right. Some kind of a structure or a hole here. 
you really gotta look carefully because you never know there could be a mine shaft around or other stuff. But there's lots of debris out here. I doubt these sleeping bags are, I'm guessing that's what they are, sleeping bags are from the days of the old miners, like these cans are, but somebody may have been out here at one point. And it's sad because you find something like this with artifacts and it's almost always been looted. Keep walking around and see what else we find. Right, looking over here, it's kind of a blue tub, piece of wood, maybe somebody camped here, I guess, I don't know. Can, campfire, something over here. I don't know what this is. Looks like an antenna or something, aluminum. Some sort of antenna, any ideas? Ham radio or something else? Come on, internet sluice, comment below, what is this? It's some sort of an antenna. Clearly it's uh, not from the days of the old miners, but some sort of an antenna. Strange. Let's see what else is out here. I tried to lift up the antenna, but I can see it's tied to this log, so... Maybe ham radio? I don't know. I, I should know I have a ham radio license. But check this out, Ford. That's an old school hubcap. That might be kind of a cool artifact if it wasn't so dented. I'll take a picture of it and leave it. I got nothing for it, it's just some scrap metal. There's more pieces of metal. Campfire, campsite. Look around and see if there's anything else out here. Nothing else really, a comb, coat hanger, fork, sunglasses. No, this wasn't Kenny Beach's campsite. This is, uh, this is a few hours north of where Kenny Beach disappeared from. This is not the Sheep Range Mountains. This is, uh, this is Mount Irish, which is north of, uh, well, near Mount Irish. Uh, it's north of Area 51, basically. All right. There's some stuff over here, and I think that might be the road or path we gotta take over there. Water jug. Here's maybe that hubcap from the Ford. Which I doubt somebody drove out here, but who knows. It's clear there was a road out here at one point in time. I don't see anything obvious out there. Although there could be something interesting way in those trees, you just wouldn't even know it. And like I said, it's pointless to watch the drone, to launch the drone, because you can't see the trees, but I am gonna pin the location and we'll uh, come back and check it on Google Earth. Looks like maybe a pile of bricks could have been used for construction material, a pile of uh, dirt. Just leave me to believe there could be a cabin around here, bricks and uh, or bricks and limestone rock like that are usually used in the construction of cabins. So we'll keep our eyes peeled and see if maybe somebody did build a cabin because something like that, typically, unless it's destroyed, would withstand the test of time. Let's keep on going. Clearly, this is the road. And uh, may have been an ancient road at one point in time, but it isn't anymore. And it's obvious not, nobody's driven this for a while. So I'm also optimistic that there could be intact structures this mine we're going to. Let's keep going. Just taking a quick break in the shade here. I didn't realize it was all steep uphill. Kind of hard to tell on Google Earth. Which, you know, I use Onyx Off-Road and a few other apps. So you can you could tell terrain elevation, but it, it still it doesn't look that steep when you're sitting at home on the PC. But once you come out here, it really is actually kind of steep. Not that bad, just kind of wears on you. So I think we're a little more than halfway there. So I'm gonna continue on, I feel all right. Um, haven't eaten yet, but like I said, I ate before we left. We had those uh, gas station breakfast tacos, which probably had tons of calories and uh, that's about it. So right now I feel fine. If I get hungry, I'll stop. I've got freeze dried food in the backpack and uh, we'll continue on. If I'm tired, I'll take a break, but Let's continue on. I kind of would like to see this place. All right, just, again, Desert National Wildlife Refuge vehicles aren't permitted, you know that. Out here they are. So I could have brought a small dirt bike out here. My CR450L is uh, 
it'd be a little big and awkward over some of this extreme stuff. I mean, for like right here, it's fine, but other obstacles would be a little challenging. So maybe a very small two stroke 125 or something would have been nice, uh, but that's fine. We're doing it just so well hiking, turn it flat out. And if we're lucky, it'll stay flat and easy like this the rest of the way. Look at this view, look at that. Maybe we come back, we got, we'll have time for a quick drone flight out there just to check the view. Let's keep going. Oh, no such luck, it's, uh, it's uphill again, but we're making progress. Take a quick rest in the shade and keep on going. One o'clock, 30 minutes, 346 elevation gain. 53 beats per minute, three quarters of a mile, 7,300 feet. All right, there's a little prospect pit there. We gotta continue the climb. We're getting there. Apparently hit a fork in the road. Then we've gotta go down a little bit, which is good. Things are climbing a little bit on the way back. Here, I'm not sure it's over here. Let's take a quick pick look. The take a quick peek. It looks like a nice view or something. Oh. These high elevation hikes, a steep uphill incline, can really wear you out. Oh. All right, I don't think there's anything over here. Just a quick detour since it's all flat ground. Nice view. Some sort of a hawk out there. Be an epic place to camp, nice and peaceful out here. All right, let's continue on. Get to this doggone mine. And it better be worth it. And get back to the truck. Get back to the trailhead. Air up. And see if we can make it to a little alien for uh, a late lunch, early dinner kind of thing. Judging by the displaced rock, it looks like there's another prospect pit there. Could even be a filling in mine. But it uh, looks like rain and wind may have uh, displaced some of this uh, tailing. So there's an old can there too. But where we're going is way up there, probably somewhere in that, uh, in that canyon. So far it's not a significant hill and I really hope it stays that way. Um, it's relatively flat even terrain. So I hope it's that way all the way to the mine. And that'll be an easy trick there an easy somewhat of an easy trek back although a slight uphill incline till we get to the summit then it's all downhill back to the truck but uh mine should be straight ahead here in this canyon i think i don't know maybe i check the gps again okay i don't know if this is it but we're very close starting to see significant debris so it's around here somewhere um Somewhat of a newer can, even though it's been there for a long time. Here's what may have been an old mining cart. Some wood. Let's look around and find that structure. Now remember, just because there's a structure on Google Earth doesn't mean it's still standing. Google Earth pictures are several years old. There is wood out here. I see some wheels probably from a mining cart, which means there's got to be a shaft around here somewhere. And I want to find it. That might be it over there. We'll check there in just a second. Yeah, this is an old mining cart. Check this out. There should be a shaft around here somewhere, maybe even a structure. Let's keep looking. Haven't found the shaft yet, but if there's a mining cart like this, um, there is a significant shaft with railroad tracks inside. There's gotta be. This would be kind of cool artifact right here. Let's continue looking around here and hopefully find that shaft. All right. So far, nothing. All 
I have a picture of what this thing looked like on Google Earth. And I pinned it. But it's got to be around here somewhere. I may have to launch a drone to find it. We'll keep looking. It's kind of a big wasp. I don't think it's a tarantula hawk. But it's a big wasp I want to avoid. Right, according to GPS, we're, uh, we're close, but we're not there. So let's uh, backtrack a little bit and try to find this. It's got to be in this canyon somewhere. It's got to be. I don't know where else it could be. You'd think a, a mine shaft wouldn't be that hard to find. Especially one big enough to accommodate a cart like that. Okay. It might be up there. Um, that's what I'm gonna try to do is go up there. I'm gonna need both hands for this. I'm gonna put the camera away. I've got, I've got wood going all the way up the hill there. And I wonder if it's somewhere up on that hill. I don't think it's here. We may have to climb this hill. I'm gonna climb the hill a little bit and see if the GPS shows that we're getting closer. If so, we'll just keep climbing. It's a steep one though, it's a beast. All right, let's do it. Yeah, it looks like this is it. Question is, there's something up there. These wooden rails look like it might have been the tracks for that mining cart to carry ore down here. Oh, what a day. Okay. Yeah checking the GPS this is it so I'm gonna put the phone away and this would be good to launch the drone to check but we we're launch a drone and there is something up there we're going up anyway but because all this wood leads uphill I would say there's likely something up there I could have sworn I saw a shack or something on Google Earth. So let's keep going. There's a leaf spring. I wonder if that was from the cart. Well, like I said before, sometimes in life you gotta face your beast. To get what you want in life, you gotta face it. The beast will keep pushing you down. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is a doggone beast. And we're gonna put one foot in front of the other and climb and try to get up there. And coming back, it should be Breeze, relatively speaking. Okay, we we'll take a break in this plateau up here. Break time. Wow, oh, look at that! I just checked GPS, and 100%, we're going the right way. We have uh, come apparently halfway 
I don't know how much further we're going. We have to go, but clearly this was an old railroad, an old uh, track, train track or something where they had their mining cart on for ore sample, I guess, maybe a rope attached to it. There's gotta be something up there, which is why we're gonna climb this hill. Let's keep going. A short break. The shade come a long way. See what could be a tailings pile up there. Not too much further. So let's keep on going. I'm not gonna roll film because you need to hear me huffing and puffing all the way up there. But I think we're close. Let's go. On the clock, 55 minutes. 154 beats per minute. 582 foot elevation gain. 1.27 miles. I'm tired. Tailings pile. Tailings pile. And there's a, I think there's a shaft right there. I think we made it. Might be a couple of shafts up here. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. Clearly that's where the railroad stops. Check over here first. See if there's anything over here. It's a flat area. Thank goodness. Maybe it continues on, I don't know. But over here is where I think the shaft is. Okay. I saw a structure on Google Earth, but I couldn't obviously zoom in close enough to see what it was. So I do see a wooden, some wooden over here, something wooden. So let's come over here. And this is not a shaft, this is a doggone prospect pit. Frickin' prospect pit. Here's a, well, this could have been the structure I saw. Is it possible that dang ore cart, everything was constructed so they can dig prospect pits in the side of the hill and there's no frickin' shaft? Jesus, talk about getting shafted. All that freaking climb for nothing. This is probably the structure I saw on Google Earth, probably. All right, now before you say it, why don't you just use the drone to climb before you had to climb that hill. Look, you know, this is an animal, bro. Um, interesting. Here's tailing this pile. I wonder if there was a shaft here that's filled in. Um, it looked promising, A. B, the drone may not have shown everything. And C, if there was something up here, we'd have to climb anyway. So you know the drone's not an exact science. So here we are, we did climb it. Um, I don't see anything, that's the only shaft I could see, and that's a freaking coyote hole. Maybe coyote bro. I don't see anything. Skunk for a damn prospect pit. But this is a pretty, pretty doggone big tailings pile though, so there's gotta be a shaft around here, unless this was it and it somehow filled in. I mean, that's possible. Maybe this was a shaft and they dynamited it to fill it in. Or maybe, maybe there's a landslide and it caved in. So yeah, there could have been a shaft at one time. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't come up here for nothing, so I'm gonna break out the drone and do a quick flight. Just a quick recon flight and see if we could see anything.
All right, so you know the drone's a great tool and can be useful, but it's not absolute. If you take a look at this shot right here, you can see right here is where I climbed up. Um, these wooden planks or rails, I guess, where the rail system used to be, it's on the side of an extremely steep hill. So I was focused on climbing the hill and not falling. And um, I didn't see what else was around here. I mean, now, why would I go off to the side and take a look? But if you do go off to the side, especially on the left over here, take a look at this. This is what I believe is a tailings pile and um, this loose dirt um, is more than likely dug out from the mine shaft and the mine shaft I believe is right here um, but obviously I can't uh, fly the drone over here and see it um, after the fact when I was looking at the small viewfinder on the phone I didn't see this right here and I didn't know it until I analyzed the video later that there may very well have been a shaft right here and I suspect this is what they were digging because I think this is part of the the dirt at the tailings and it comes all the way down the hill so had I known this was here beforehand I could have um, you know I could have I could have uh, checked it out so in this situation perhaps a pre-recon with the drone would have been helpful All right, what a flight, huh? How do you feel now? We were way over there, just past that ridge line out there, and uh, that was about 1,200 feet. Um, as I get, you know, more used to this drone, maybe I can go a little bit further, but I'll tell you what, um, just flying from here, just around these hills, and then and then past that ridge right up over yonder, that burned up half the battery. Um, so we're at 17 minutes right now, whereas we were at, uh, what, 30? So it burned up damn near half the battery, and that was, five ten minute flight um, so clearly the drone is going to be a tool uh, to use to inspect inaccessible areas but really no meaningful recon unfortunately um, but still places like this you may be able to launch the drone and uh, and see what's out there so it might be helpful in some circumstances but uh, again this is just kind of a shakedown hike um, for the drone uh, for us it's, it's a major expedition and uh, that's about it this is more likely what I saw on Google Earth I don't think there's anything else out here unless you saw something in the flight that I didn't because I can't really see in the uh, small phone screen so like I said either either the mine has been caved in or blasted which is very possible or nothing more than a prospect pit my vote says cave in who knows? <sighs> Tracks appear to end here, so I don't think there's anything else around here. I'm going to start the uh, trek down this hill. Once we get down, uh, it's just get to the summit, which isn't a big deal, and then it's uh, follow this path all the way back to the truck, which is about a mile and a half or so. How long is it? 1.32 miles. Well, mile and a quarter. Not that big a deal. And then from there, drive to the trailhead, air up, and uh, hopefully make it to... Um, time is at 304 and we get probably almost dinner time a little alien and we'll get back late tonight so but that's fine let's go well, i'm disappointed we didn't see a shaft up there but like i said there could have been one there could have been a cave in it's always a risk you run into so all we've got to do now is come down this hill and i know a lot of you say you know get a satellite communicator you know to keep in touch in case something happens and yeah it's a good idea but it's also it's 400 bucks and then 120 bucks a year for the most basic plan to use in emergencies and they are nice to have and this is extremely remote but i did just pull two bars and i texted a buddy of mine with my location well he, he's tracking my phone right now and um told him everything is fine um mile and a half back to the truck and then you know drive back to the trailhead we should be good to go and uh so he's tracking my location and uh at least somebody out there is it just goes to show you yeah there's no signal out here but every now and then you can pull a couple of bars and it's enough to get a text or a message out well i'm not going to roll film on this it's just it's just me traversing a hill going down, so um, I'm getting a little hungry. Fortunately, there shouldn't be any really significant climbing between here and the truck. It should be mostly downhill. It's just down here and then 
where you flew in the drone over there on that hill on the other side and from there it's all downhill and then go back to the truck should be a somewhat of an easy drive out of here air up and head to Rachel and hopefully get something to eat all right we made it I'll tell you what the beast ain't got nothing on this bad boy that was a monster there's a mining uh mining trolley cart whatever you call it is down there I'll make a cool artifact to bring back if you were able to which you're not might have been part of the mining cart out there too hard to say I have to double check Google Earth this one looked promising but it wasn't yeah that's just how it goes sometimes well, we made it we did all right not gonna film the whole hike back to the truck check in once with the truck and then uh, from there we'll take off this pack plug in everything for charging and uh, continue on out of here air up and go to Rachel to eat an early dinner we've crossed the summit it should be a downhill from here and believe it or not as tough as that beast was there are still more mines further up that canyon. Unbelievable. People were climbing these beasts and digging these mines without modern technology way back in the day. And here we are loaded with batteries and GPS and cameras and drones and everything retracing their steps. It's amazing how they used to do it back then. And they made a lot of money. And believe it or not, people still make a lot of money mining in Nevada. It's one of the top industries, actually. But there's a cost to mine, so it really depends how much people need to invest to get the, uh, the material to make it cost effective. Either way, whatever happened out here, it's... Uh, it's still just nice to come out and uh, do the hike. Uh, 1.7 miles on the clock, 630 foot elevation gain, hour and hour and a half. But it's all downhill, like I said, so it shouldn't be any big deal getting back to the truck. I feel all right, and. Uh, to get back to the truck, barring any mechanical issues, it should be smooth sailing. I do. We're back at the little settlement already, and uh, it's obviously a lot easier coming back than it was going out there. Um, I saw some wood here, and then these rocks kind of stacked in, in a row. Looking around, thought maybe there's something out here. Um, it'd be a great place to build a little cabin or something. There's that pile of bricks and limestone over there, so if you're going to be out here for any period of time, it would be you, know, you could probably take some time and build something out here. It might be nice. But um, I just did a quick look around. I see some trash. I didn't see anything out here. Look, like the rocks are crumbling here, but there's nothing. And I don't see anything over here. It's just taking a quick look around. Because it's easy to miss stuff out here. Because when I'm walking, I'm walking like this. Just watching where I'm going. So I rely on you guys to see anything interesting and that's why I kind of hold the camera up like this so you guys can see the trail even though I'm looking down a little piece of trash knickknacks here and there nothing uh nothing really interesting or value that I can see you know it's weird we're we're deep in the mountains it's really super remote out here and uh how long has it been since we've been hiking a few weeks um lost truck I think it was before the Ohio trip yeah, that's the last time we did a really big hike. And that was our monster. That was a big one, 13 miles. And uh, the time we spent at home or traveling in the airports and stuff, sitting in traffic, longing to come out here away from people. And uh, now that we're here, it seems like I've never even left. It seemed like I've been out here all along to the continuation of the last hike. Which is weird because clearly I've been... A lot of stuff has happened since then. Oh, what was that? Another horned lizard, horned toad. 
Where'd he go? There he is. It's not a horned toad. It's a, uh, I think they call them fence lizards. They're really fast. There's another one over there. I'll try to get close to him. Yeah, really fast lizards. Um, watching out for this stuff, because that's nasty. I saw this trash over here, and I want to just walk over and take a look, but I'm not seeing anything. Just trash. Sometimes you see trash, you see uh, other interesting artifacts. That's We found that the lost truck, that's that's how we found it. We started seeing trash and more and more piles of trash until we finally came across that old truck. I mean, there's a Ford hubcap over there. I would venture to say at one point there was a Ford out here. But it isn't anymore. Or is there? I don't know. I don't see it. And I'm going to continue on towards the truck. Yeah, that's that's all the stuff we checked out already. Getting a little windy here. Winds are picking up and that's fine. Let's keep on going. Getting closer. All right, on the clock, 2.39 miles. 630 foot elevation gain, although it field felt a lot harder than that going up. 115 beats per minute and uh, damn near two hours. And there's the truck tucked away just where we left it. Let's uh, put our gear in there, saddle up, and get on out of here. It's not smooth sailing yet until we're on pavement. Try hiking. Three miles, 96 degree heat. Warm, uh, warm Powerade tastes just fine. Let's get out of here. All right, made it back to the trailhead. We're just airing up right now, and uh, should be just a few minutes to get uh, these tires back to the road pressure. See the road right out there uh, just before that lake. We're gonna head out to the pavement and then drive about 30 minutes into Rachel and uh, see if we can have an early dinner in Rachel at uh, the little alien. All right, 40 PSI in the money all the way around. Let's disconnect the air, put everything away, and uh, hit the road. I try to keep it at uh, 40 PSI because the tires are hot right now from hauling ass down that road at about 45 miles an hour. When it's cold in the morning, they'll probably be at the normal air pressure, which is uh, 36 to 38. So 40 is 40 PSI for right now is fine. All right, so we just finished airing up. Everything is uh, 38, 39. That's perfect. We're heading up here to Rachel, Nevada and uh, the turnoff is just up here a little bit. Uh, we're still getting these doggone bugs on the windshield, so we're just gonna have to deal with it for right now. But we'll uh, head out to Rachel and uh, show in about 40 minutes to get there. All right, so a sharp turn here. Things clear. For 39 miles, continue straight. And we're heading to Rachel. Evidently, this is the extraterrestrial highway because of its proximity to Area 51. So you can see Rachel, Nevada, 40 miles. We'll get about 30 miles from Area 51, and um, it's about as far as anybody can get. Well, you can get farther. You can drive all the way down to the um, gate, but we're not gonna do that. There's just simply no reason. Nothing down there but trouble. So, um, yeah, if you don't have any business down there, it's no reason to go down there. Now, up here is the Alien Visitor Center, I think. Yeah, Alien Visitor Center. And uh, I'm not gonna stop here. I think it's just kind of a gift shop selling knickknacks and stuff, just, just a way to spend your money and things like that. But tourists stop here and things like that. So yeah, Area 51 stuff, souvenirs. Um, we'll pass on that and keep on going to Rachel. Um, and that's about that. It's a long and lonely highway out here. I don't know if you can see off the distance, that straight line through the desert. That is the highway. and I. I'm not sure if Rachel's somewhere along there. I think it's further along. But uh, yeah, this is a massive wide open space and there's little if anything out here. All right, correction, that long and lonely highway out there, that is not the way to Rachel. That is the way to Area 51, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, you basically just follow that road way out there uh, into the mountains somewhere and uh, you'll eventually come across an Air Force security checkpoint and I can assure you they will not let you pass. No matter how much you pay them, they will not let you pass. And uh, out there, the buildings you see, I believe is a ranch and um, it's a ranch and they have grazing rights on Area 51 property, but they've been out there for years. Where we're going is straight ahead and it's still a long, lonely highway, but uh, should be there in about 20 minutes. You really 
can't see in the video how vast this place is. I mean, it's just massive as far as the eye can see. Now over those mountains is Area 51, about uh, maybe 30 miles or so. So if you were to drive a straight line for about 30 minutes, 20, 30 minutes, you would be at Area 51. So it's, uh, you never know what you may see flying around in the skies out here. Keep your eyes open, you never know. But uh, we're almost to Rachel, hopefully another 10 minutes or so. All right, ladies and gentlemen, at long last, this thriving metropolis up here is Rachel, Nevada. Um, pretty much the only town out here for miles. So we're gonna stop and see if we can get something to eat and then uh, we're gonna turn around and head back towards Las Vegas in about two and a half, three hours to get there. All right, so we're looking for the little alien, like an extraterrestrial highway right there with all those signs on it. And uh, got gas right here, gas station, old classic car right in front, Calpoke gas station. And right up there, American flag, should be the little alien. And they have uh, burgers and stuff, so that's what we're gonna try to do. I know a couple of you have asked to see this place, so uh, you're about to see it. Little alien, Rachel, Nevada. Very close to Area 51. You see they even have a UFO on the tow truck right there. But yeah, this is a little alien. So let's come on over here, park, and then uh, we'll go inside and get something to eat. All right, we just finished uh, burger and fries, a little alien here. And unfortunately, the owner does not allow any filming whatsoever on the property. Um, nobody can film anything on the property, so we are not filming. Trust me, I assure you, we're not filming. Um, I'm not showing you anything here. I'm not filming anything. Um, so that's, that's all it is. And uh, I'd love to film here, but I'm not filming, okay? Got it? Not filming. Anyway, um, he said it was doing the movie Paul, so you can look up the movie Paul and evidently I haven't seen it myself But evidently there was a little alien scene in there and for some reason they said they Recreated the whole little alien in somewhere in New Mexico and stiffed these guys um, I don't know the whole story, but uh, for some reason they don't allow anybody to record out here So I'm not recording um, or I'm not filming I'm recording. There's a difference. He didn't say we couldn't record But anyway, that's it little alien burger 20 bucks for burger and fries is a little steep um, and the burger really wasn't really that big, but I had to eat one here just to say I did. Um, what, did it, was it a good value? Not really, but I mean, honestly, where else are you going to eat out here? So this is the, uh, I guess, Alien Cowpoke gas station. And probably the only gas station out here at Rachel. You see the old car right out there. And uh, out there, <clears throat> where those hills are, way, way out there, is the Rachel Mine. There's a mine out there. It's a huge complex with huge tunnels. Really, really cool. And uh, no, we're not going there today, sorry. But I wouldn't rule it out for another video sometime. It's a pretty cool place. But that's about it, Rachel, Nevada, not much to it. So let's get back on the road. We got about two and a half, three hours to Las Vegas. And uh, we're not gonna go and we're not gonna get there until we uh, get moving. So let's do it. There's, there's a fly in here somewhere, and every time I open the window to get this damn fly out of here, it flies to the other side. So, if you hear me opening the window, it's I'm trying to get this damn fly out of my truck. It's really kind of annoying. It's been here for a while. I keep opening the window, and it just flies the opposite direction. So, anyway, um, just your GPS, two hours and 15 minutes to Las Vegas. So, that puts us about uh, 7.45, almost 8 p.m. 30 miles over those mountains is an airstrip and a military base is one of the most secretive in the world. What do they have out there? Nobody will ever know. Nobody like me or you. I decided to take a quick detour on the way back home after Little Alien and go check out just a dirt road that I saw across the highway from Area 51. And for some strange reason, there is a lot of bones out here. I found what I'm assuming is the bones of cattle something very large. There's the skull, a spine, jaw, shoulder blade maybe, part of the spine. For some strange reason, there's a lot of bones. This is the second set of bones that I found out here on this road. Very strange. 
Does that have anything to do with Area 51 cattle mutilations? Possible? Who knows? I'm not going to go much further. I've got uh, I got 6.15 p.m. and it's a healthy two hours back to Las Vegas. So what I'm going to do is uh, get in the truck and get on out of here. If I see something interesting, I'll stop. Otherwise, we're going to continue on um, towards Las Vegas. This is what happens when you just turn off on random roads off the highway near Area 51. Now granted, Area 51's on the other side of those mountains on the other side of the highway, but still, we're, uh, we're kind of close. So yeah, I just wanted to drive around here and see what's out here. Nothing but uh, dead animals, as I can see. There's so many roads out here you could spend an entire day. You could spend days or weeks out here exploring. And you won't even hit the military areas, which is way out there. All right, looks like the highway up there. there was a second set of bones out here somewhere, but uh, we're just gonna keep on going. All right, you know where we are. Obviously, you can read uh, the sign here. Area 51 Alien Research Center Museum Gift Shops Event Center. Uh, I'm not gonna go inside. I just, I'm tired. I wanna get home. We got about an hour and a half drive. That direction, about an uh, hour and a half or so, is Las Vegas, so let's, uh, let's get on the road and uh, get home. Wow, what a day. I got 8.19 on the clock. Uh, we left the house at 6.20 in the morning, so it's been a very, very long day. Um, we did successfully go to the two mines. One had structures and a uh, very deep mine shaft. We launched a new drone, got some great video, and uh, it should be a pretty cool adventure. So we're almost home at this point, and uh, you can almost see the lights of Las Vegas up there. And um, it's kind of really cool at night coming in, seeing all those lights and everything. But um, that's it for this adventure. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like what you see, please subscribe, and see you in the next adventure. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the videos, please subscribe to the channel and you'll be notified when I post a new one. All of my videos are unscripted as they happen. I can't promise they'll be exciting, but I can promise they'll be 100% real. My name is Steve from Las Vegas and these are my adventures.